Hey, everybody, welcome to the Cripes Cast. This is the podcast where we talk to people for and or from the Midwest. We are brought to you by Jolly Good Soda, and here is today's episode. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Cripes Cast. Today, my guest is Chad Daniels. You've probably heard his comedy or seen his comedy. He's got a billion streams on his six albums. Um, He's been on Late Night, uh, The Tonight Show, all that sort of stuff, Uh, and he is from Minnesota. So we did a little Minnesota versus Wisconsin off, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Folks can look forward to that. (laughs) Colleen, all right. Uh, Colleen Maraca, EP of the (laughs) Cripes cast, joins me here. Uh, We did play basketball. last week um oh just wait, okay just, just you my, know what just my body language who do you think won <sighs> can you smirk again and, and <laughs> you do that laugh that evil laugh uh, if who, you do, wanna, who do you think won shut up kelly if you sound wanna, off in the comments who you think won <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see the footage you can go to patreon.com says charlie barons god i hate that laugh I, I've I've only just heard that laugh as of thirty seconds ago, and I absolutely love it. God, it's a guttural. Like- no, I've just never heard so much joy emanate from you. Vicious joy is a way of describing it. Vicious joy. Uh, it's a good day to be me. I'll tell it's you this, Colleen. I'll tell you this. Here's why you did so well. Okay, so like, just like put it out there on the record. I won. Yeah. We know. No, you, you want to say it to the fans at home? No, I don't. I'm still in denial. <laughs> um, your left-handed dribbling, I can't even <laughs> dribble left-handed. That's what set me apart? I thought yeah. you were going to shit on me for my left-handed dribbling. I, didn't, I never went left. I was looking at the footage right now. You went left all the time. Your left, my right. <laughs> no, my right, your left. Look at the footage again. You can okay. dribble left-handed. Yeah, I can, but okay, I always so that, went right. I was, that, that was a, a distinguishing thing, mm-hmm. I noticed. Because you had the ability to go left and then cross over to the right. That is that is true, But yes. you did often go up, and, and you also did a lot of pump fakes, which that, got me off my feet. Now, you're very good at those aspects. You're a terrible shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely <laughs> awful. Shut up. You are, no, that game would have been done. That game, that game took a half hour. It would have been done in 10 <laughs> minutes had you been able to make any shots. It was awful. Now, I was also <laughs> awful at shooting, which is why the, the game took forever. I made the mistake of sinking my first shot. Having so much confidence, I was like, let's go to 21. <laughs> no, I, it Spoiler also was, alert, we did not go to 21. It was also a mixture of me being like, oh, he's made his first three let's go to 21 because then maybe i'll have some time to get back because i was like oh yeah. if it's just like three after three after three then i'm screwed and it'll right. be quick and done and right um first I, of all watch your mouth i have a great shot um <laughs> so guys the nice part is if you subscribe to the patreon <laughs> account you no, can see really bad. the raw footage the proof that colleen does the shots weren't dropping shot. for me that day, but I, alas, I still won. Um, I did talk about it with my brother before. My family did have like a lot of um, game plans, talks with me. Uh, and I was talking with my brother and he says, uh, Charlie has a lot more to prove and a lot more to lose. Mm-hmm. And so then he and so then we were kind of talking about it. And then from my own experience of having played with my brother and like other guys before, yeah. I just always know the guys are so susceptible to the fake because you guys always want to like, Stuff, stuff it, it which like, i did blocks. one time and one then time. but but like that's why i was like i i was going and being like i'm gonna fake him a lot and that's what i'm gonna try to get you off your feet and then go up and i got a couple points that way well it'd be really embarrassing if you lost which you almost did given the amount of planning you put into this it, how did i almost lose well because i won by three you did win by three two technically or three technically but two because i gave you a point right yeah yeah you did because you were huffing and puffing <laughs> and you didn't want to go to 21. And you Had weren't. We, I could have used an inhaler. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that was the wildfires in Canada, though. They, yeah. They've somehow made their way to Wisconsin. <laughs> it was a super fun game. <laughs> um. Anyway, folks, changing gears. We've got Father's Day coming up. And yep. if you want to get dad something, head on over to CripesCast.com. Click on the merch section. We've got... 
the Wisconsin Rapids t-shirt. Roll out the barrel. Midwest goodbye. Midwest nice. Tell your folks I says hi. We got stickers, koozies, drink signs, the the card game uh, that I created, card sale, the book, uh, Midwest Survival Guide, cribbage boards made in Milwaukee. Um, we've got it all over there. And what else do we have up, Colleen? New wave of tour dates? Are those yeah, up we yet? do. Yeah. So by the time that this podcast comes out, so we have dates announced in Wichita, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, because isn't there like Kansas City, Missouri, and then Kansas City, Kansas? Mm. It's the Missouri one, uh, <laughs> Springfield, Evansville, Indiana, and a whole bunch more. But those are the first ones that are getting announced for the good old fashioned tour. So um, check it out, charliebarons.com. And um, yeah, go get those tickets. We do have a lot more coming up. Those are just the first ones announced. And so, yeah, it's super exciting. Are you excited to get back out on the road? I'm very excited to get back out on the road. I've been working on new material for a while. And, um, you know, that I've been off the road now for a few months and I... I I got to get back on the road because the road is the place where I can run away from all my feelings, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I'm just What's sitting just here, I've got to deal with them all, you know, whoa, let's cut that. I'll send it to your therapist and let's just like, let oh, no, my therapist knows. <laughs> okay. In fact, we tried to work through my, uh, my, my stuff and my therapist was even like, you know, maybe you should just get back on the road. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's kind of like if a hook gets too far, hooked too far inside of a fish, <laughs> you drop them back in the water. Maybe it'll work this out on its own. Usually not, yeah. you know, but this anyway. This is a cry for help. Um, well, that took a wild turn but if you want to go see charlie avoid his feelings go to charliebarons.com click on tour or if you go into cripescast.com click on tour we'll have updated dates as the time goes on those will probably be more solidified throughout the summer but yeah charlie's touring this fall and oh isn't that just the best back on the road back on the road back out of the office yeah, which means you can guys can work all from home. work from home which means Work kind of from home. <laughs> There's a couple books and I'm excited to read this fall. Oh, God. <laughs> Get some, kick my feet up. No, but yeah. So uh, if you want to see my tour, head there. You know where to go. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, now it is time for my interview with Chad Daniels. Is that your go-to golf hat? It is. Yep. Are you good at golf? Um, no. I don't okay. know. Sometimes. How often do you play golf, would you say? And kind of how long did it take you to play it to really enjoy it? So I started 11 years ago and uh, probably took me until last summer to really enjoy it. I mean, really? <laughs> it's just it's when you start as an adult, it's so hard, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. when when you're when you're a kid, in order to get that whip you need, you have to do everything right. But when you're an adult, you can swing a club like a softball bat and yeah. still get a decent amount of distance. So, But then when you get old again, you're going to be able to hit it 100 yards. So I think you do need to learn how to do it. And um, I don't know. I started having fun last year, I guess. Obviously, if you're drinking beer on the course, it's right. fun the whole time. <laughs> right. But I started enjoying the actual golf part of it well, a couple of years ago, probably. Okay. And so you didn't like, you didn't grow up doing that kind of thing at all. The golf no, I played type. baseball. Okay. No. You played so, same season. Yeah. Did you look down on golf uh, as a kid? I just thought it was a rich kid sport and I wasn't a rich kid. So yeah. it was, you know, you could either go buy a baseball glove and a baseball, or you could uh, go buy a set of a thousand dollar clubs, which I certainly did not have. So yeah. No, me either. I still got my uncle's um, clubs. That's what I currently play with. Yeah, like the okay. uh, Pat. Um, no, um, what's the name of that that old golfer with uh, who's got his own clubs? I forget now. They're oh, I think I, I think I know who you're talking Hogan, about Tom Watson. Paul Hogan. Oh, okay, those not ones. Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan is from uh, Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> So that's anyway. not a pitching wedge. That's a pitching wedge. <laughs> that's how good at golf I am. So <laughs> where uh, where did you grow up in, in Minnesota? <clears throat> I grew up in Fergus Falls. So if you go from Minneapolis to Fargo, North Dakota, it's a four hour drive. Yep. 
Burgess yep. Falls is three hours into that drive. So it's an hour, an hour before you get to Fargo. Okay. I made yeah. that drive uh, recently, actually. My buddy lives in Fargo, so I went up there okay. for his wedding and all that. That's that's quite the, the drive to do. You know? Yeah, hearing you say that, I almost want to reach through my computer and give you a hug because it sucks. <laughs> It's brutal. I know. This one time I took a train to Montana um, thinking it would be like this cool, like, like awesome experience. You take take a train right out. <laughs> right. Except the the part I took, I, I t- it was 30 hour ride. It was all daylight for Minnesota and North Dakota. And then the sun started setting as soon as we got to the mountains. It was yeah, miserable. Perfect, perfect yeah. timing. Uh, what was life uh, like growing up there? I was pretty great. You know, you have friends. It's still small town, so it's a it's a gossip mill. And if you know your, your parents aren't on the straight and narrow, everybody knows about it. Or I didn't find this out until after high school, but I got blamed for so much stuff. So we were at a Super Bowl party at my buddy's house, and after I had left, they were playing football. And a lamp got broken and they just told the mom that I did it because I'd already had this uh, reputation. Oh, yeah. So they're like, well, we don't want to ruin anyone else's reputation. So let's just dump it all on him, which (laughs) made me laugh very hard because I heard this. I went to this guy's wedding and his mom came up and she goes, you know, you still owe me a lamp. And then everyone started laughing and they finally told her the truth. Oh my was, God. And I didn't even know about it. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, I've been getting the side eye for this fake <laughs> lamp that I, you know, situation. Yeah. I, I, it's <laughs> funny you say that. I had a similar thing happen where my buddy got, uh, he was upset because this girl broke up with him and we were sitting in his car and there was this spider crawling up on his windshield. And he, he decided to take out all his aggression on this spider. He put up a piece of paper. For I guess to take care of the splash, you know, of the sure. spider, punched the spider, and he punched a hole in his windshield, and he blamed that on me. So, I will tell you this: if anyone ever blamed me for punching a hole in a windshield, I'd be like, "You're damn right, I did that," and no one <laughs> would mess with you for the rest of your life because you're like, "You see this one? This one goes through windshields, dude. So cool it." <laughs> did you ever watch Breaking Bad? Yeah, wow, oh, that's so crazy. My girlfriend and I are going through it right now. Okay. okay. She's seen it five times. I saw it once right right at so I binged it in one week the day I started the day after the uh, series finale. Uh-huh. So it's been a super long time. So I'm you watching the show. whole thing in a week though back then. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a it's a very bingeable show. Yeah. And, and I, uh, so I don't even remember what's going on. Well, so yeah. It's like, I'm watching a brand new show. It's very, it's great. See, I did that with the Sopranos where I, I watched it as, you know, growing up. And then, um, I just rewatched it. I was like, man, I don't know what I was doing growing up, but it wasn't good for my memory. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. But the reason I brought up breaking bad is there's this one scene, you know, with the, where they steal the, the time machine or they steal the ATM and, yeah. you know, it pushes it on the guy yep. spoiler alert but you know if you haven't seen it um but then they're like no we're not going to tell anyone that we didn't kill that person we're just going to let everyone think you yeah. know that we did that that's kind of that was that's sort of your thought process with the punching of the wind absolutely shield. yeah and then and then it comes out later that uh they found out it was the wife and so jesse lost all his street all cred it. Yeah. in just one second and that's a life lesson for you right there, you know? Yep. Yeah, you got to be honest or you got to do the dirty work yourself. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you live uh, right now? So February, I just moved down to Minneapolis. Oh, Rick, uh, so you were up there. Um, the, the whole time, yeah. Wow. So you grew up there and you were living there and you were doing comedy there. You didn't go out to... Um, you must, you didn't go out to LA, New York, nothing. You're nope. just doing, wow. Wow. I mean, you know, I, I'd go out there and do shows and sure. showcases and stuff like that. But I lived in Fergus Falls. So lived in Fergus Falls, uh, moved to Minneapolis. That's where, this is where I started comedy. Yeah. And then lived away from Fergus Falls for about 10 years. Where'd you live? 
uh, in Minneapolis and St. Peter, Minnesota. There was a, a private school that my my kid's mom was teaching at. And um, and so we were down there and then we decided to move back to Fergus Falls because we're both from there. Yeah. And we thought it'd be easier if, um, you know, the kids had grandparents around, stuff like that when I was on the road. So I uh, lived there and then my daughter just went to college. She's my youngest. She just went to college in September. And so um, I started dating uh, this gal from Washington and she moved to Minneapolis and uh, and it's great. You know, she's also a comedian. I've never dated a comedian before. And it's been so great because we get each other's lifestyle and we get each other's schedule. And uh, it's it is very, <laughs> I, I didn't. I've seen comedians date and I've been like, how is this going to work? And now that I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Okay. All right. Well, what are the pros and the cons of dating a comedian? Um, This is going to sound like I'm full of shit, but I haven't, I, I haven't seen a con yet. Oh, nice. I mean, I guess, okay, hold on. I'll, I'll take that back. The one con is when you have a weekend off, but they have to go work. Yeah. Yeah. That that sucks a little bit, but otherwise yeah. it's it's been great. And the pros are, you know, when we're uh, bitching about having to post clips. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Misery the, loves the, company. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The other person gets it. And uh, like I said, she gets my schedule and she gets my my lifestyle. She knows that when I'm after a show, if I don't text for an hour, it's because I'm in the meet and greet line and I'm talking to the staff. And stuff like that. There's no like, where the hell are you? None of that stuff. And um, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not. Yeah. Because some people, if they don't quite understand they're like, your show's done, what what could you possibly be doing? Meanwhile, you're like, right. you know, signing somebody's cast, you know, yeah. at that exact yeah. moment when they think you're you might be doing something weird or whatever. Right. And and yeah. and let me be clear. No one that isn't a comedian should understand this. I'm yeah. not saying <laughs> right. I'm not saying like, what what's wrong with you? Understand it. No one should understand it. It's an impossible thing to understand. But now that I f- have found someone that does understand it, it is nice. Yeah, that's cool. So you guys don't like posting clips, huh? Well, she is fantastic at it. She is like uh-huh. uh, you know, everyone asks her, what social media person do you use? And it's her. Oh, wow. And I'm I'm sitting at the counter with her while she's doing it. And I'm just watching, uh, like reading articles about hockey when I should be doing the same thing she's doing. Yeah. But, yeah. but I'm I'm not. I, I don't know. I, I got into, com- I mean, this is like old man stuff, but I got into comedy when it was like, all right, you have to send a video to the bookers to prove that you're funny and then you get to work and then you build a crowd from people coming out and they like you and then they come back. Right. And now it is just a, it's just a different ball game, right? You can, you can sit in your chair at your house and say a funny sentence and get 2 million views. And then all of a sudden people are coming out. And I think that's also great. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, it's crazy. Like you, you kind of climb this one mountain, you get good at climbing this mountain and then you get, you know, to the top or close to the top. And then everyone's like, yeah, but actually we're climbing that mountain now. And, you know, I mean, like you yeah. got to get now do the social media mountain in order to do the thing right. that you just climbed the mountain for just to be yeah, a good I, comedian. I had um, a lot of success on Pandora and Pandora used to have, well, they think they still do, but it's this service called AMP where you could record a 15 second commercial. Uh-huh. And you could you could send it to the city that you're going to. So anyone that's listening to your station in that city gets that commercial. And so I was like, this is great. I'll never have to learn social media because I'm just going to do this. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. now there's a there's this royalty lawsuit. And so they took everything down off of Pandora that's mine. And so I no longer have access to that. So now I'm oh, like, oh, geez. brutal. <laughs> I'm like five years behind on <laughs> putting clips out and stuff like that. But um it it is a fun thing to learn how to do and and whatever, but it is uh, it is interesting when you see like my daughter can just it is one minute and she has somehow a two minute video and you're yeah. like what's happening? And yeah, then it'll take me an entire day. 
Yeah. You know, and then you think, though, because then you're like, oh, I'm not going to do this because I don't have the days, you know. But then the more you do it, the quicker you get at it. But you're like, right. yeah, you just know drive sometimes to get like really good at something you don't want to get good at, like editing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, that old Hedberg joke when he was like, uh, oh, you you do comedy. Can you can you write for television? And, and then he would always compare it to, uh, oh, you're a cook. Can you farm? <laughs> it's just always yeah. one adjacent, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get uh, started in comedy out there? Was it when you went to Minneapolis, uh, that yeah. era or, okay. Well, I mean, so I had always liked kind of performing, you know, I was, uh, I would MC the, uh, homecoming festivities and stuff like that. And, ah. and I'd done a couple of things in college where I was in front of people, but I, uh, you know, started at Acme officially Acme yeah. comedy company and, uh, and did the contest and lost in the first round, but thought it was so fun. Yeah. I mean, I just got, I was there and I'm thinking like, Oh, you're a pretty funny guy. You make your friends laugh. And then I get up there and I'm like, Oh, this is so different. You're just seeing everyone murder. And you yeah. get up there and people are like, what? We don't, we don't know who Jeffrey is. Stop. So, yeah. um, and then I, I went back about six months later and tried it again. And, and then it really had fun doing it. So when you went back, like you went up there, didn't necessarily crush were you still doing it in those six months or did it take you six months to get back up on stage it took me six months but i also went to i would go to open mics and watch yeah and then i would sit at the bar and i would i would kind of you know nudge my shoulder up to the group of comedians that had the five minutes and the seven minute sets because that yeah. was like that was big stuff and so and i would listen to them and try to figure out what they were talking about. And, it, and it did it, it felt like uh you know, I was having these same thoughts and, how you know, I, I talked like them. I mean, not exactly the cadence and stuff, but I just, you know, uh, had a lot of opinions and stuff like that. And so I thought this is probably where I need to be. Yeah. And then uh, went back and ended up having a ton of fun the next couple of times. And then, you know, you eat crap and, and it ebbs and flows and whatever. But um, yeah, here we are. Yeah. What was your worst bomb? Do you remember it? I do. It was in, uh, I always say this wrong. People make fun of me, but it's Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Oh yeah. Fond du Lac. Fond, Fond du Lac. Okay. Yeah. And I was there and, um, no one laughed for the first 28 minutes and I was doing 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and so, um, it was so brutal. <laughs> Where were you playing there? Where were it you was playing? a hotel. It was a bar connected to a hotel. Okay. I, I think know I that. know. I think I played at that hotel. They since redone it. Okay, it was a terrible hotel before. Uh, well, so maybe yeah. people were just upset with their rooms. You don't know. <laughs> I, yeah. I think they turned off a Packer preseason game. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and so I was like, "Well, what are, what are we supposed to do about this?" And so doing the show, and then finally, I just uh, I was so sick of bombing that I go, uh, "Hey." So I know you didn't like the first part of the set, but just so you know, Time Magazine has said that I have one of the top 10 funniest closers in America. The only problem is I'm going to need two bottles of Rolling Rock and two shots of Jack Daniels. And then everyone's like looking around. I go, who's going to help out? Who's going to be the hero tonight? So we can see one of the top 10 closers in America. And then uh, finally, this lumberjack seriously looked like a lumberjack brings up two bottles of rolling rock and two shots in one hand he was just <laughs> holding it in one hand like a tray and then i take it i go who's ready and a couple people cheered and i go come on who's ready and everyone cheered and then i did the two shots of jack daniels and i raised my bottles of rolling rock and i said thanks a lot this sucks and then i sprinted back to my room <laughs> like the biggest wimp in the history of comedy <laughs> that's awesome uh so yeah it was it were was they, uh, were they laughing as you were leaving or no i don't think so there was a lot okay. of uh disgruntled noise <laughs> and then i was working with this guy who he uh, i was opening and he brought me with him so he was uh. like thanks for setting the table <laughs> man <laughs> yeah it was it was tough do you find that an, a good opener to set the table is important or do you think as a headliner 
sometimes it would work in your favor if the opener bombs and then by comparison you look significantly better do you think it's just an absolute disaster if you go in with it i guess so crowd? i i think a, a if you're closing the show you should be able to handle anything right right like i remember guys used to come up and they go hey just so you know if you could not talk about uh uh relationships kids parenting <laughs> or be or being alive that'd be great <laughs> and you're like okay i'll try um and that was always weird to me because i'm like well if you have a joke yours should definitely be funnier than mine you're crazy right. right so um uh but but i prefer to have somebody that kills in front of me mm -hmm. just because i think it's better for the the show in general yeah. I, I would much rather have people come up and be like, oh, man, that whole show was great instead of you sure were funnier than the the first guy or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I had this one. Uh, the reason I asked is I, I'm, I'm kind of in your ballpark with that, but I, I had a couple of comedians I was talking to. They were saying that they like that juxtaposition thing. But I sure. just feel like I just feel like that that sucks. Just tr having to bring a crowd up from a guy who just took stole two rolling rocks and two shots. And went <laughs> yeah, to oh, no, I know. Hotel yeah. room. <laughs> That's hilarious. yeah. I, I also think it's just it's it's a good show. You know, I, I don't want people to have to sit through a half hour of of nonsense. And and I also think if you're bringing people on the road with you, it should be people that are working hard and that are funny. Yeah. So, right. you know, because I, I, I think they've kind of earned that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so you're doing comedy in Minnesota when when and you go back and you do it like when are you getting to the point where you're like, OK, I feel like I can do this as a career. Um, probably. I'd say four years into it, it was one of those things where I, I had the greatest I was a bartender at this place called uh, the Eagle's Nest in Robbinsdale, which is a, a suburb of Minneapolis. Yeah. And it was Ron and Cindy Eagles were the the owners. And what they would do is they knew that I wanted to do stand-up. So when I was gone for a weekend, <clears throat> they would have people cover my shifts. And then when I was home, they would give me the people that covered my shifts. We'd switch. So I'd get their shift. So I was still making money. Mm. And uh, it really, I don't think I could still be doing this because I, you know, I had a little, uh, I had a baby at the time. And, um, and so I don't know if I would be doing this if they had not done that. But I, I think the moment where you were gone too much to ask them to do that was the moment you were like, okay, I'm yeah. just gonna, I'm gonna go full court press on this thing. Yeah. Well, shout out to the Eagles. Oh, no um, kidding. And I love that their place is called the Eagle's Nest. Yeah, it's, it's such good. a classic, like Midwest uh, yep. name for a. Su it was a supper club, you say? It was so. Bar. It was next to this place called Broadway Pizza. There's a okay. couple of them in the metro area, and yeah. then and then they had an entire bar that was right next to it that you could still order the pizzas, but okay. it was more of the bar side with the games and got and it adults and stuff. Yeah, got it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Folks, listen, you ever get invited to a Midwest cookout and you offer to bring something and then the host says, oh, no, just bring yourself. And then you says, no, really, I can't just show up empty handed. And then they go, for real, I'm serious. Just come and enjoy some brats and beers. And then you go, no, really, I insist. And then things get super tense because you said, I insist. And then they say, OK, bring whatever you want. No, uh, just me. OK, mm -hmm. sounds good. Well, if you do find yourself stuck in that situation, bring something everyone's going to like. Get yourself some jolly good soda. It is the perfect way to please everyone. They got the variety pack to satisfy every Midwesterner's pop or soda taste buds. Whatever you call it, you call it pop, call it soda. Just know that Jolly Goods got you covered from blue raspberry to root beer. You're going to be the cookout MVP. And folks, did I tell <laughs> jollygoodsoda.com to get that soda? Jollygoodsoda.com. Thank you, Colleen. Mm -hmm. And folks, did I tell you that Dad's Day deals are all over Fleet Farm? You can't beat the Father's Day at the Fleet Farm. Check out their huge selection of top tool brands like Milwaukee and DeWalt and make Dad's Day the 
perfect day with the perfect gift. Or you know what? If you're if it's Father's Day and you don't have anything to do with your dad, just say, hey there, dad. Uh, I want to make today about you. Would you want to go to the fleet farm? That's so sweet. Isn't that nice? Wait, why am I crying? Give dad That's what he really so wants. Sweet. Go on a trip to the fleet farm and maybe give him a gift card. So he's got, you know, he's like, well, if I got a gift card, I got to go, you know. And or you go like anything you want. And then you, is there a dollar, <laughs> dollar aisle? You go, it's all on me. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> Dads do have a way of doing that. <laughs> yeah. Anything you want. It, that's under a dollar folks listen <laughs> one of the best ways to support the gripes cast go to gripescast.com click on the merch section or subscribe to the patreon patreon.com slash charlie barons in fact if you want to get some hot netflix recommendations from grandma sue boom we've got a reviewing and uh giving suggestions on <laughs> patreon.com slash charlie barons and uh there you have it all right let's get back to the gripes cast what was your first first job? For it's like ever? Yeah. Paperboy. Oh, you were a paper boy. Yeah. Did you um were you bicycle doing I was a skate bicycle? I was a skateboard guy. So <laughs> you were a skateboard paper boy? Yeah, I had Man, that's a rare breed. I had yeah, I had two uh two skateboards. One was just really crummy, but that's the one that the bag rode on. Yeah. I've never heard of this. I've never oh, yeah, heard was, of a skateboard paper boy. Yeah, that was Do, that was my thing. Was your other board a long board? No, no, no just yeah. standard skateboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because long boards are tough to maneuver. You can't you can't just be going doing that unless you're in like, I don't know. I don't even know how you're doing this. So do, do you have like a trailer hitch on your skateboard? <laughs> no but the the bag has a a big strap that's supposed to go around your shoulder yeah and then i would cinch that up and it would just ride alongside me so you're like you're almost walking a, a dog on yeah a, a little bit yeah yep. <laughs> oh, yep. man that's innovative did you know where'd you learn how to do that oh i just decided i would i think from laziness so you're in were you like an innovator in the paperboy world for, for I, doing I it that way? I don't know that I've still, I don't think I've seen anybody do that still. So, but people did that then? No, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. I was the only one doing it, but I was also very bad at being the paper boy um, because <laughs> I'd, I'd go get all the money. And then, uh -huh. so if people haven't done this before, here's, you have to go to people's homes and you have to collect the, the monthly fee for the paper. And then it's your job to take all of that money and then give some of it back to the paper. And then you get to keep some of it. But every time I would collect, my dad would take my money. <laughs> and I was trying to explain to him like, dude, you don't get it. This isn't all my money. If you're going right. to steal my money, only steal half of the money in here because I owe this to the paper. Yeah. And he would just continue to take all of it. And I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> and he's like, don't get fired from this job. I'm like, bitch, you are the reason I'm going to get fired from this job. You're going to have the paper coming with a baseball bat ready to break your kneecaps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen Breaking Bad. I know how this works. Um, so what? why was your dad stealing your money? Oh, I think he liked to gamble on uh, wild, unimaginable um, things. Oh, your dad was a gambler, huh? Yeah, he was a gambler. He liked to gamble. I found this out much later because this is kind of a weird story. When I was in sixth grade, I get home and my dad's home, which was not normal. And he's like, you got to come down here. And I go downstairs and he shows me this VHS tape that he had taken at an open mic of a guy he worked with that was doing impressions. And he's like, I'm going to manage this guy. And we are going to be richer than you'd ever imagine. I was like, okay, great. You can stop stealing my paper money. <laughs> so then um, cut to, I had been doing comedy for, I don't know, like seven or eight years or something. And this guy, I'm, all, I'm doing this bar gig. And this guy goes up in front of me, older than me. And he puts a, a bucket on his hat and he's doing a Darth Vader thing. And I go, oh my God, I've seen this. It was the guy from no. the tape. 
No way. And so I go up to him. I go, oh, my God, you you know Steve Daniels? He's like, yeah, I used to work with him. I go, that's my dad. I go, he showed me a video of you when I was in sixth grade. And I was just excited to tell him that, not knowing it would sound like, hey, I was in sixth grade and now I've, oh, now yeah. I've uh, you know, now gone I'm... above you in comedy. <laughs> and that's not at all what I was doing. But after he, you know, calmed down from that, he was telling me that my dad used to bet on which fly would land on the bar first. Oh, my God. And he would give people 10 to 1 odds. So he would he could either win 50 or lose 500. And, wow. and that, yeah. And, and, and so then you look <laughs> back and you're like, oh, yeah, that's why he took my paper money. <laughs> <laughs> how how how? How were you able to sustain as a paper boy if you continued to lose your money, though? I got How'd fired. You, you got fired. Yeah. Got it. I got yeah. fired, and then I had to mow lawns to pay mm. back what I owed the paper. Oh, that's brutal. Did you well, hide your money in a better place this time? I don't think there was a better place. <laughs> it was like, uh, you know, when, when you see like a Breaking Bad situation, yeah. where the DEA comes in and yeah. there's just a couch broken in half. You're like, well, <laughs> they must have really been looking for something. <laughs> yeah, no no tile in the basement was unturned. No place, no place to hide it until I did eventually uh, start hiding it in a plastic bag underneath. M remember those old swing sets when you, when you would swing back too far, the legs would lift up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was one of those, and I I buried it underneath one of the legs. Wow, you had to bury your money from your dad. Yeah, that's that's wild. Well, it's also, I mean, it feels great now because it's nice to get that out of the way. I don't have to bury my money anymore, which is nice. Yeah, I just yeah. <laughs> when you start there, you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And a bank never. You were too young for the bank. I just, yeah, I didn't know how to do it. And when you're that young, you had to have a parent go with. I'm like, right. well, I'm not having this dipshit come with me. <laughs> no, no, I would also like to say, I yeah. just hop in here quickly. My mother is one of the most fantastic people that's ever lived. So it's not that's like a, this woe is me story. No, I mean, yeah. It's a balance, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were they together, your folks? They were together until maybe I was like 14 or something. Ah, got it. Yeah. So did you... How old were you when you were doing the paper route? Uh, probably sixth grade, 12, I suppose. Okay. Okay. So did you ever like rat your dad out on your mom? No, no. Cause I always, they, it was always just about to combust. Ah, uh, got it. So, you, so were, like, you were not trying to light yeah. the match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, I don't need to be the reason there's a murder suicide in this house. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> were you uh so then you're mowing lawns then you're mowing lawns yep. after this okay um <clears throat> do you have any like uh were there any weird people like in your lawn mowing days or your paper days like any weird stories like that i mean you already told a pretty weird one with your dad stealing the money and whatnot but any like dogs that weren't a fan of you or you know no but we had the person that took over my paper route, our dog bit her. Oh, which is, which is wild. And when you live in your hometown for almost ever. Yeah. I mean, I golf with her husband in the summers. Uh huh. And so, uh, so I see her a lot and I'll always ask, how's your leg? <laughs> Even though, you know, it's been a hundred years. I still ask. Yeah. Did you did you have to get rid of the dog after that or no? I think that was right before if a dog bit you, you had to put it down. I think yeah. that it may have been right before that law got passed because we kept the dog for quite a while after that. But yeah, as far as like excuse me, people on the route, um, you know, sometimes an old guy would be like, You want to come in and watch television? And be like, No, thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Just so you know, you're not going to catch me. I have two skateboards. <laughs> you're not even going to come close to catching me. I had a weird job. Uh, I had a, I did, there was this um, older woman in the neighborhood, and I started working for her probably when I was 11. It was sorting yarn at her yarn house. 
And then I kind of graduated to doing the yard work. And I, one time she had me pick all of the dandelions and put them in a big bowl. And then we were going to make dandelion wine. So I was like 11, 12 years old fermenting yeah. dandelions. So, <laughs> well, you got to learn young. I know you got to figure it out somehow. It's funny those I, first jobs. So, man. Yeah. I love that you went from yarn work to yard work. So you didn't even have to change your t shirt that much. <laughs> you just scratched the N off and painted a D on it. You're like, look at yeah. it. Same shirt. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Man, I wish I had a shirt for that. That would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're doing, um, Back to the uh, fast forward, back to the uh, career. Um, when do you start like uh, making the transition to headlining and, um, you know, touring and then, you know, getting on Conan and all that sort of stuff? It was probably seven years in, I'd say, because, you know, you start, you do open mic until you have 15 minutes <clears throat> to MC a club. And then when you have 15 minutes to MC a club, you can do a half hour at a bar and then you work bars and you get a good enough half hour to do a half hour at a club. And then you're doing 45 minutes at a bar. I mean, it's like back and forth, back and forth. And um, yeah, so probably about seven years that that took me to from the first time I did open mic to kind of consistently closing the shows. And I, I don't say headline because for me, I think headlining is when your name is on the marquee. Yeah. People people will come because your name is there. But when you're a closer, it's just like you're the guy doing the most time. Right. Right. I mean, right. I, so when you're at a bar, no one knew who I was. They were just going to the bar because it was comedy night. Right. And uh, so I was closing about seven years in. And then I would sign up for these contests and I'd have friends that moved to LA or New York and I'd go out and I'd do their shows and, um, and then, you know, get seen on some stuff. I did a ton of, uh, just driving to get to these showcases. One time I drove from Minneapolis to Chicago to do a seven minute set. So that's like a seven hour drive. Oh my God. To do a seven minute set for uh star search, the new star search. Ah, and then I had to drive seven hours back because I had to be there for my son in the morning. And so it was like 14 hours in the car to do seven minutes. And uh, I got almost booed off stage uh, during the seven minutes. But I said something to the person that was heckling me that was funny enough, I guess, to get the attention of this guy, JP Buck, who was working for Star Search. And then he ended up being the guy who booked Conan forever. Oh, wow. So after the show, he goes, hey, I can't put you on Star Search just because if you say something like that to a judge, I'll get fired. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What did you say? Do you remember? Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I sure do. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a joke about this nurse who didn't have her index finger uh -huh. and she was taking my pulse. And it looked like her index finger was in my wrist because it was like an optical illusion. Yeah. And I said, she, it wasn't fair because she wasn't getting an accurate heart rate because I was freaking out because I thought her finger, blah, blah, blah. And there's this <laughs> yeah. whole bit about that. Yeah. And then this lady screams out, F you. And I go, whoa, what's going on? And she goes, you ruined my night. And I go, how about we talk about it back at the bar? And she goes, nope, you ruined my night. I'm going to ruin your night. And I was like, how did I ruin your night? And then she held up uh, her hands and she just had thumbs. I think it's a, a something it's people are born like this, but that thumb and a pinky only. Uh -huh. Got it. <clears throat> and so she was mad. I was talking about not having a finger. Right. And I said, uh, well, listen, lady, if I knew when you were going to get crabby about this, I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> yeah. And she said, I wasn't crabby until you brought it up. And I go, no, 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 not crabby, mad, crabby. And then I did my hands like little pincers. And the, the room is like a hallway, right? I mean, it's, it's a skinny room. It's Zany's in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, I know that room. Yeah. And I got booed so hard that I could almost feel my hair move. I mean, it was like there was movement of the air in the room. I got booed so hard. Wow. But then I, I saw comedians in the back were high-fiving and you know, falling off their chairs and stuff. So I'm like, okay, this is worth it. So I get off stage and normally you walk back through the crowd, 
but I had to go through the front door and then back to the alley to get let in because I didn't want to walk through the crowd. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, who's got two rolling rocks? So, <laughs> um, so I go through and I get back there and that's when JP was like, listen, I'm going to keep my eye out for you because that made me laugh so hard. And then probably seven years after that, maybe not even seven, but five, something like that, he called me. I was on my way to a softball game in Fergus Falls and he called me and he goes, Hey, just so you know, I'm booking Conan. He got the tonight show. I'd love to have you on. And I was like, what? So, I mean, he remembered that from five years. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. And then he's, he's good dude. And then did once you got on Conan, did that kind of jumpstart something with, um, tour dates and all that, or how how Um, does that work back then? didn't really jumpstart anything other than now you had that tonight show credit. Uh huh. And so there was a little more validity when you would talk to bookers and stuff like that. I would say the thing that really jumpstarted everything was, um, comedy central used to have a, uh, contest called comedy central. Well, I can't remember, but you would go, they'd pick 10 people from submissions to go to all these different places, Minneapolis, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, like all these places. And I picked Southern California because I thought, well, I'm not going to win, but I'd like to be seen by industry. And so I went out there and I actually ended up winning that round. And that got me a bunch of attention. I ended up getting uh, new faces from it. And I ended up getting a manager and an agency and stuff like that. So that was probably the biggest the biggest thing that happened. And so kind of in the meantime, though, you know, you're doing the dad thing back yep. in Minnesota and you're on a softball team. I didn't want to burn past that one. So, <laughs> all right. So what kind of a dad are you on the softball team? Are you like, I feel like there's like five different types of dads who play softball, but dad who takes it super seriously, dad who's just there for the beers, you know, the dad sure. is just always stretching for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> like, what, what was your vibe on that team? I was uh, the dad that needed to get away from my kids for two hours. Okay. God. And uh, no, that, I guess not necessarily true, but I, I was just, the, I, I just needed some sort of competitive outlet Uh huh. Oh. because I was competitive when I was growing up, but when you get older, there's less and less opportunities. Right. And so I didn't take it too seriously, but I definitely would try to make the highlight reel, (laughs) you know, diving in the outfield or behind the back to, you know, from shortstop to second base for the double play, something like that. Yeah. And it never really worked out for me. Okay. And that's why I no longer play softball and I play golf. (laughs) All right. It's a much safer way for your, uh, you know, things that tear golf is a lot safer for things that tear. Absolutely. I, you know, Hey, a 10 foot putt still makes the highlight reel. I don't have to dive onto a rock in the outfield. Right. Exactly. Do you have any, uh, softball plays though, that you were like, man, this, this was the one like, did you get any walk off home runs or anything like that? I never had that, but I had, uh, um, and the only reason I bring this up, somebody just brought this up when I was, my son, since I moved to Minneapolis, my son has rented my house in Fergus Falls. Uh huh. And I was just up there and, uh, we were moving some stuff and this guy goes, your old man ever tell you about that catch he made. And so (laughs) I was, uh, (laughs) there was a lefty up Uh and the bases were loaded And uh, we were just up by one, bottom of the seventh, play seven innings. And um, I challenged him. I was playing left field, and I walked way up, and I was like, challenge! So just to be a jerk. And he tried (laughs) to hit it over my head, but he hit it to the left of me. And I ran and, you know, full Superman dove and and caught it. And I... um, It's interesting that you asked me this, because I would not have had an answer for you two weeks ago. Wow. But when this, but when this guy goes, do you ever tell you about that catch? I was like, Oh yeah, that catch, <laughs> that's right. Really started feeling hot shit about it. Did you get a little sad though? Thinking like, you know, now these days everyone's filming everything you would have been able oh, to watch right. that. Or are you, are you happy that the memory, right. because the memory you can build on that, you know, the, the yes. leaps can go from one foot to five feet, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. So when I just said full Superman, there's yeah. a great chance I was just tilted forward a little bit. <laughs> but as I tell it, because there's no video footage, yeah, I tell it it's a full Superman leap. Yeah, and I believed you. I didn't question that. I imagined you with a cape on at that. That's point. what I. F- I mean, listen, I'm gonna tell you, it's what I felt like. Mm-hmm. But I also know that. Uh, yeah, I was old, you know, as fast as, you know, you were in high school and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. What, um, you know, growing up, living in Minnesota your whole life, what did you think of Wisconsin? So I always thought, I mean, if football had never been invented, mm-hmm. Minnesota and Wisconsin would be one state. Yeah, definitely. Then we wouldn't but, let the Mississippi yeah. divide us. If right, yes. it weren't for the Packers and the Vikings, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we, that would not that that would be you know uh, just a, a a puddle for us. Yeah, you know? there'd be that more bridges. Secor- yeah, yep, yeah. that'd be it. But um, and then you know we'd we'd get to have spotted cow over here, which would be nice. Yeah, right. You you could have spotted cow. Um, you could have you know access we we wouldn't have this argument over who has more lakes you know right right because you are the land of 10,000 lakes right but in Wisconsin we have like 15,000 lakes yeah and then I, so i was just in Milwaukee uh and someone pulled that up on their phone as they came through and they're like just so you know and I'm like, just so you know, when it rains here, you guys have 17,000 lakes because you count puddles. So let's cut the, <laughs> cut the nonsense. We we do have, I, I bring this up during this argument every now and again, but we do have one of our lakes is literally called Random Lake, you know, because when, <laughs> when you're counting puddles, bad part is you got to name them all. You run out of names. So Ran- uh, yeah, that's right. uh, are you a Vikings fan? I am a Vikings fan, but it's it's troubling because I am a as far away from a Kirk Cousins fan as you can get. Okay, Got I it. am of the belief that uh, if you love Jesus so much, you should go live with him voluntarily. And <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I don't like a, an athlete that can pray away a loss. I'm not into it. I'm not making fun of religion. I'm just telling you, I need somebody who, when they lose, it hurts. Yeah, <laughs> so they feel it the next game and they want to win. Okay, um, but yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of his. It's all it's always the same thing. It's always uh, it's always fourth and eight, and he throws it three yards and expects everybody to do the heavy lifting. It's like you know, get it to the first down mark. Yeah, yeah, you would think that God would almost be telling him with these glosses to work a little harder. Yeah, you would. Yeah, where where are the stone tablets now, Kurt? <laughs> so, uh, do you have any? Uh, do you call it casserole or do you call it hot dish or what do you call it? Call it hot dish where I grew up. Yeah. Okay. And what yep. did that look like for you? Do you have a lot of hot dish uh, yeah. in your childhood? Tons of hot dish, as you know. My my uh, dad had to steal my money to pay gambling debts, so there wasn't a lot of crab legs at the house. <laughs> no. A lot of a lot of creamy mushroom soup, though. Yeah, creamy <laughs> mushroom soup, string beans, uh, uh, some some brown hamburger, some American cheese, and some tater tats. Of course. Oh yeah, gotta get your carbohydrate on top of that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then, of course, I would douse it in ketchup, and everyone would look at me weird, but I don't care. No. So, uh, but that is one of the things that when I eat tater tot hot dish. It brings me right back to being five years old. It's crazy how wow. that works. Wow. Do you do you, do you do that these days as sort of a um, a uh, spiritual exercise? <laughs> yeah, like uh, what's the drug that everybody's doing? Ayahuasca. In America? Yeah, ayahuasca. ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah, I, I just make sure I go in eating it with some intentions. <laughs> I write my intentions down before I eat it, and yeah. uh, but no, it's it's great. I have it once. Once a winter, uh-huh. I uh, make chili once a winter. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is great. It's hearty yeah. and it, I, I think it tastes amazing, even though it looks like vomit. It's yeah, wonderful. it looks disgusting, but tastes yeah. so good. Yeah. 
Do you ever uh, fish or do anything like that, fishing? Yeah, cotton? I spend uh, – mo- so the summer I'll spend up north again because we have a little cabin on a lake. And so do some fishing and some, you know, all the water stuff that you need to do. Have a little pontoon, cruise around, drink some beers. Ah, uh, you're a pontooner. I'm a pontoon guy, yeah. Uh, I'm a pontoon guy too. And growing up, I was never – you know, we didn't have a boat. I'm from – my family's got 12 kids, so we didn't, we were oh not, a, yeah, yeah, we were not, uh, I wouldn't say uh, we grew up poor by any means, but when you take, you know, whatever income my, my dad, ha, you know, was bringing in, divide it by 12, you, you're yeah. cheap, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You're by the nature of it. So we never had that. But I was looking, my uncles would have, they would rent a boat when we would go up north or something. Yep. So we would have like a, a ski boat. And so we would try, I always thought that was cool as hell. You know, I would never be a guy on those boring ass pontoon boats. But then you I, discover yeah, beer. You yeah, know? that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, wait, I can just like float and drink, you know? Yep. That's perfect. Yeah, so I have sea legs on mine. You can just cruise around to different spots and raise it up. You don't have to drop an anchor or anything. Oh, and, wow. And That's then, really uh, cool. Yeah, it's nice. And then a little jet ski to pull the kids on the tube. Nice. That's. I think that's all you need. Yeah, that's great. And when so you actually own the pontoon now. Yep. And that's awesome. That's a great yeah. investment. And do you so, fish off that? It's been fun. We do. Yeah, we fish off that and we fish off kayaks too to get in the reeds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice fishing kayaks. What's your favorite uh, species of fish? Or are you a multi-species action kind of guy? I mean, I like, uh, well, you know, panfish are easy. You drop drop a worm in with a bobber and all of a sudden you have dinner. But um, walleye are probably my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite to eat and favorite to catch. Yep. They're good eaters. Yeah. You when Okay. So when I go out with my dad fishing, um, you know, he's... If he's not catching fish, there's this internal anxiety inside of him that he needs to be always pulling fish out in order gotcha. to enjoy fishing. He needs to fill the live well. Like we got to be eating sure. with this food, or this fishing trip is just a waste of time. <laughs> sure. you know? do, you, do you ever get that, uh, or are you just are you? Uh, uh, I'm going for a nice couple fish i don't need to fill the live well kind of a thing. yeah i normally so when i'm fishing 95 percent of the time it's with my son yeah and so for me i have him trapped on a pontoon or <laughs> trapped near me in a kayak yeah so it's just a lot of time to talk about life and stuff like that so i could catch zero fish and be totally fine with that nice i mean it is fun for him to catch fish because he he's a good fisherman and he likes it i'm not that good of a fisherman okay he's 10 times the fisherman i am and um, it's fun to see him cause you know, he'll, he'll assess the problem and, you know, we need to be over here on this little ridge line we need to be jigging for the, and it's like, okay. And, you know, he'll tie it up and he'll have it in the water. It's like, uh, putting clips online it takes him five seconds. And then here I am, I got a fingernail clipper <laughs> to make sure there's not excess line. Cause I can't bite it with my teeth. I never learned how to do that. Oh so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just fun to be out there. I think. Yeah. That's awesome. And for tubing, are you the kind of dad that would like take them on this nice, enjoyable ride, or would you like no. whip them? Or, yeah. Okay. What? No. Nope. Tell if you me get about on the tube. Mm-hmm. If you get on the tube, it is you. You have to understand that I am searching for giant waves, and my only goal <laughs> is to knock you off. <laughs> the one thing I won't do is spin them. Sometimes you see that little whip. Yep. Where if you're going 35 miles per hour and then you turn and they're whipping, they're going like they got to be going 45, 55. Yeah. There's and I don't need cases. to I don't need to watch my kids skip into somebody's dock. So I try to avoid that. But yeah. when it comes to waves, I like going in circles and then just waiting until there's a huge wave and then just launch them. I do yeah. like that quite a bit. You you're a wave hunter. I'm a wave. Yes, I'm a wave hunter. That's a perfect. Actually, I might actually have that stenciled on my uh, jet ski. Do that. That that would be great. I'd love yeah. to see that. That's a. It's, you might. You might actually, if you make bumper stickers, uh, you know, or little uh, decals, you might yeah. be able to 
you might be able to sell some of those, you know. That's <laughs> I wouldn't the thing. wave hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So where uh, where are you touring uh, now? I have a ton of dates that I'm about to announce for the. I don't work a ton uh, in the summer. Yeah, I'm yeah. going out on some uh, fully loaded uh, with Burt Kreischer. Going out on some of those tour dates. Sweet. And then, um, yeah, my website will be filled with September to January uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. I I like that that idea of I did the same thing this year because I was sick of being on the road. The yep. best time of the year to be in right. Wisconsin or Minnesota. Right. Yeah, I mean, you want to be on the lake. That's why. That's why you put up with the winter. Right. And then in the winter, let's go do like the Naples dates or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I had so until this year, I had kids in high school. Uh huh. So when they were off for the summer, I didn't want to be gone even for a second. Yeah. Because I just, you know, love hanging out and love doing all that stuff. So um, I'm going to see how it goes. My daughter will be back from school and uh, my son's still in the area. So hopefully we get some hangout time this summer. But otherwise, I'm just going to be. Like I said, putt putting around on the pontoon with a beer in my hand. That's great, man. I yep. love it. Well, yeah. where can people? Um, oh, I did want to ask this. Uh, I got a little lightning round of questions. I'm ready. Uh, so I'll ask those before we go. Okay. Um, duck, duck, gray duck, or duck, duck, goose? It's duck, duck, gray duck. Why? I, because geese are mostly Canadian and they're not welcome here. <laughs> Okay, good answer. I, I've never uh, heard that, but I like that. Sorry, Canadians. Um, <laughs> who's got uh, Who's got the better state fair, Wisconsin or Minnesota? I feel like I already know what you're going to say. Well, I got to tell you, I've only been to the Minnesota State Fair, and oh, I think you, it's I think it's glorious. Yes. So I mean, I I don't have the information to really answer that, but I, I would say probably both are glorious. Um, nice. But yeah, okay, bags versus cornhole. Bags. Cornhole oh. sounds like something that happens at the Catholic Church. <laughs> My Catholic mother is going to hate that. Uh, soda. I, I believe <laughs> I believe. Uh, soda versus pop. Yeah, we call it pop over here. You do. OK. Yeah. I mean, Ma just ju just so when I'm on the road, I'll call it soda pop. Here's what blew my mind. Everything in Texas is called a Coke. Yeah. So you go, hey, I'll have a Coke. And they go, what kind? Dr. Pepper. You're like, okay, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even handle this. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was a soda guy myself, but my grandpa from Fond du Lac called it pop. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's it's weird. It's not really a, it's sort of pockets of pop and pockets of soda. So, so for me, it comes down to the whole name of it is soda pop. Yeah. And so you need to you need to ask yourself, am I the kind of person that works harder? Am I going to use two syllables to describe uh, this or am I just going to come in pop and everyone knows what I'm talking about? Uh huh. So you're saying I'm trying too hard is what you're saying. I'm just saying it's a lot of wasted effort, man. It's true. That's true. We only have so much time on this earth. Why <laughs> spend it on more <laughs> syllables than we have to? Exactly. I like that. Um, okay, cool, man. Well, hey, where can people find uh, find all your stuff? You can go uh, that Chad Daniels on Instagram because there are 12 Chad Danielses that are younger than me that beat me to everything on social Bastards. media. So I've gone with that Chad Daniels. And then chaddaniels.com is my website. That's where all my dates are. But if you're looking for content, uh, <laughs> content, <laughs> This is just I can tell you the squirm as you said it. Yeah. Almost dry heaved. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for that stuff, that's on uh Instagram. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, man. I, I oh, hope thanks you for having me. It was, it was cool to meet you. Yeah, it was great meeting you too. And I hope you uh enjoy your summer on the on the pontoon. I will. And are you taking I, your summer off again? I am taking you know, to a degree, yeah. I'm I'm okay. doing like a few dates here and there, but mostly gotcha. I'm not starting to tour until the fall. Ah, cool. So, we'll have fun. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, maybe we'll see you on the road or around or something. That'd be great. All right. Cool, dude. Well, uh, we'll talk to easy. you soon. Hope All you right. get some walleyes. Ah, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Well, folks, that is it. For this episode of the Cast, make sure you follow Chad Daniels at that Chad Daniels on Twitter, Instagram, and and comedian Chad Daniels on Facebook, or just go to chaddaniels.com.
You can get all his tour dates there, all his socials there. And uh, please follow us on the Cripes cast or me at Charlie Barron's anywhere you get your stuff. And uh, yeah, what else, Colleen? Anything else before we let the people go? Um, watch out for deer. <sighs> Keep her moving. Oh, let are me you just, I are you just you? telling me phrases <laughs> now? All right. Well, all thank right. you all for listening and everyone keep her moving and watch out for deers. Bye-bye. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. It's on Wisconsin. The Badger say it's the old Wisconsin Jubilee. You know, sometimes when you're ice fishing, you put your foot in the walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done. No, you got to keep her moving. 